Our guest speaker tonight originally came from the Democratic Republic of Congo and fled to Rwanda in 1995. And just stop and think about that. You flee one country for safety in another country, Rwanda. Uh, think about that the next time you're having a bad day at the office or a tough day on the golf course. Um, anyway, settled in Salt Lake City in 2001 and moved to Twin Falls in August of 2014. <clears throat> While he was in Utah, he uh, secured an associate degree in computer science, a bachelor of science degree in social work, and a master's in public administration. Uh, Zizé has 14 years of professional experience working with refugees inside and out of the United States, and has worked with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the Asian Association of Utah, and the State of Utah. He currently serves as director of the CSI Refugee Program. Uh, they say there were two friends of mine, just a second, Curtis Eaton and Jeff Fox, who aren't able to be here today, but they wanted to pass along their best wishes and support not only for you, but for the refugee program. Please help me welcome Zeze Rasama. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you today. Um, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be the, the director of the Refugee Center. And I'd um, um, uh, like to talk about what the refugee program is all about. Um, and I want that all of you know that the refugee, uh, U.S. Refugee Resettlement Program, it's all about uh, humanitarian. So the U.S. government is, is trying to save lives of people outside the the, the, the U.S. and we'll get a chance of uh, looking at the lives of these refugees outside the U.S. and then see how uh, we have been able to, when I say we, meaning the U.S., has been able to change their lives to uh, uh, their lives today. Um, this picture is, is really a personal picture for me. Um, um, this is my, my classroom. This is where I started uh, uh, school, and this is a second grade uh, um, class. And uh, the teacher that is standing there um, was teaching a second grade class, and she had only uh, second grade education. So no resources at all. And um, uh, uh, you know, I'm coming from a very poor country. I, I believe it's the poorest country on the planet. And uh, now imagining that, living in the poverty like that, and then now you have to become a refugee. That means your life is now, I would say, miserable, uh, uh, worse. So, um, and uh, I'm glad that uh, the U.S. government has this program to, to actually rescue people uh, like me and bring them in this country and give them the opportunities. And, and, and now I can be able to speak to uh, 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 very important people of the community uh, here. This is, a, this is a big, big, big thing. And, and, I, and I think um, you may not see how that is, is big, but I think uh, all of you should be just proud of being Americans, proud of, of being a part of, uh, of this transformation of people from a life that you see there to a life uh, that it's it's like that. I'm again in that picture back there. It's just dark, but I'm I'm in this. This was in Salt Lake City, um, uh, and uh, if you look at this picture, you'll be able to recognize me. <laughs> I'm just right there. This is me there, and, and, and look at me today. Uh, how uh, I would say the U.S. government, including the U.S. citizens, uh, helped this transformation to happen. And we are continuing doing that with even new, new, new refugees. Now, um, uh, let me give the definition of a, a refugee first before I can uh, move on. Uh, a refugee is someone who was forced, number one, was forced to leave uh, uh, their country of their home country due to uh, persecution or well-founded fear of being persecuted uh, and they are not able to return back to their country. If they are able to return back to their country, then uh, they, they, they lose their refugee status. 
Um, when a, a refugee um, moves out of their country, uh, the UN, the United Nations, is responsible to provide uh, shelter, water, and, um, and food. And the shelter they provide uh, are uh, like that. Those are uh, very small tents where some of these refugees are coming from third world countries where they have big families and they just put them in a very small tent like that uh, and the parents, the kids, all of them, they will live in, in a very small uh, place. Now, we are not talking about one or two days living in this condition. Some of these refugees have been in, in the refugee camps for 20, 25 years, 30 years living in that condition. Um, and some of them were born in the, in the, in the refugee camp and uh, grew up there, and, and, and that's their life. Um, so the persecution is based on, and I'm spend more time explaining this, uh, it's, it's based on, um, on five, uh, five things. Race, based on race, based on religion, on nationality, social group, or uh, belonging to an, an ethnicity, or political opinion. We have resettled in Twin Falls refugees that were persecuted due to nationality. Um, and these people are from Burma and, and Bhutan. Um, so they, most of them, the government just said, you guys are not from here, you need to leave. And they start killing them, then they would, uh, they would move for the Bhutanese, they moved from their country to, uh, to Nepal, and the Burmese, which is Myanmar today, uh, they moved from that country and they went to Thailand or um, uh, Thailand or Malaysia. Malaysia. So, um, and for them, they don't even have a citizenship of any country at that point. You should, you should attend some of this uh, citizenship ceremony. Uh, a refugee, after five years, they are eligible to apply for citizenship of the U.S. And, and, and once they become U.S. citizens, during the ceremony you should attend and see uh, the reaction of these people. Uh, that they call the U.S. their first country, their first nationality, because they have never uh, been uh, able to have a citizenship of any country since they were born for their whole life. And we have uh, uh, refugees that came to Twin Falls uh, due to uh, religion, uh, persecution, political opinion. And I'm going to um, talk to those two things um, um, at the same time because uh, the reason why I want to talk about that is because I get so many um, uh, uh, phone calls about uh, concerned citizens about um, uh, um, why are you bringing in uh, uh, this particular population, uh, the, uh, in particular the Muslims, uh, in, in, in Twin Falls. And my uh, response to that is, has always been that, well, uh, we bring in uh, um, uh, uh, religious minorities that were persecuted. Now, the follow-up question would be, well, we only see Muslims, and Muslims are not the minority, which is true in, in, in that country. Now, I want to explain what happens there. Um, so when these radicals, Muslims, are trying to kill the, the Christians and other religious minorities, there is a big number of, of Muslims that will stand out and voice their, their opinion and say, you can't kill these people. These are just innocent people. You cannot kill them. Now, what happens is they will turn around and that group that is protecting uh, the Christians, they become their enemy. They, be, they are targeted to be killed as well. Uh, so then when it comes to run away, those Muslims and the, the Christians, the other groups that are religious minorities, will move along together and, and settle down in another country outside their, their home country. Now it happens that the, it's a big number, more people than the Christians, that there were minorities in, in their country. And then when they become refugees, they're still minority because the religious, uh, the minority religious groups, or well, Christians are just very uh, small number in their country and they are protected by 
a huge number of, uh, uh, of other Muslims. So when the U.S. goes there to try to help these people and, and find a place for them, a safe place for them to bring them in this country, it would be very unfair to just select the Christians. Because, um, yes, the Christians, they were persecuted based on a religion, but other Muslims were persecuted because of their political opinion. They did not want to side with the radicals, with those people that were killing. And that's what we're seeing here when we, we resettle these refugees. Yes, there is uh, 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 a small number of Christians that are coming and the, the Muslims that were protecting uh, uh, the Christians. And I'll leave um, a few minutes at the end of this presentation for, for questions as well. Um, now, the social group, uh, we, we don't see many of the refugees that are persecuted because of uh, belonging to a social group or, or ethnicity. Um, and this would be uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, African countries. That's, that, that's what's going on there in, in Africa, except uh, Sudan and Somalia. But any other refugees from Africa, they were persecuted due to belonging to a particular social group. Uh, this is how they, um, they move from their home country to seek a, a safe place. Um, uh, there's many ways. You cannot use a car because using a car is uh, actually would be a, a targeted. So the only way to move uh, for the majority of our refugees is, is walking. So they go through rivers, they go through mountains, they go through dangerous jungles to, uh, to get to, uh, to the place that is safe. And uh, um, again, this is another type of a refugee camp where uh, uh, all these refugees live in for many, many, many years. Um, now, this is how. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, when I look at this picture, and, and, and knowing that in these third world countries, uh, most of the time, kids are in numbers are more than the adults, and seeing only adults moving, running with just few things uh, of their belongings, it, it makes me think think that where is the kids? So the kids are the most uh, 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 vulnerable in this situation. They die during that journey. And uh, um, parents were just going to grab only one child and, and move and run because they're, they're just running away from, uh, from uh, uh, the war. So this picture was, was taken. This was in 1994 when Rwanda had a genocide and people had to, to run this way. Now, from, from Rwanda to, to the Congo, because they, they were running away from Rwanda to go to the Congo at that time, it's, it's, it's a really, really long journey to walk. It's about uh, 200 miles. Now, you imagine how many people reach the final des destination. Uh, very, very few people. Um, again, uh, this is another way that people just will move fast and, and, and running. They don't care. In, in this group, I, I didn't even see kids in that. So that means kids... Uh, died in, in the crowd or they were left somewhere. And I usually get some, uh, some uh, clients come to me and say, would you please find my child? I don't know if uh, the child is dead or not. It has been 20 years, and, this, this, and, and we don't have any way of knowing that. The only uh, international organization that usually help in that situation is the Red Cross. Uh, but... Uh, it's, it's really, really very difficult to even know your own, uh, your own child after 20 years that you have not seen. It's, it's really uh, very difficult. And it makes me feel very, very bad and say, hey, you know, there's nothing I can do. We try to call the Red Cross, but Red, Red Cross doesn't have uh, a record of those kids. Some of those kids uh, have they didn't even know their names when they picked them up some, some place. And you were giving the name, uh, the Red Cross, and they can't find the person. Uh, again, this is uh, other types of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, refugee camp. And, and it depends on which side of the globe the refugee camp is. You can see it's different style. Uh, and, um, but 
the common about these refugee camps, they're just very small. It's a place that uh, uh, it's not fair for these people to live for many, many, many years. Um, now, let me talk about numbers. Um, uh, the largest refugee producing countries are uh, Afghanistan and Somalia and Iraq. And this was at the end of 2012. Now, you can see it's, uh, uh, Afghanistan is 2.5 million, and Somalia is about 1 million of people, and then Iraq about 700,000 people. Um, on this one, in 2013, um, let me go back. Um, Syria was number four on this. And uh, number four there, it's about seven, 700,000 people. Now, one year after, that number jumped to close to 2.5 million of Syrian refugees. Just in one year, and, and, and I'm sure today uh, it's a big, bigger number than that. Um, so, and, and there is a reason why I'm showing these numbers, because now I'm going to go and talk about uh, the groups of refugees that come to the U.S., and then we'll be comparing these numbers and how many people are coming to the U.S. from Afghanistan, from Syria, and, and from other countries there. Uh, um, t in 2004, the UN produced a report, and they uh, reported that there is more than 50 million people who are refugees uh, around around the globe. Um, now they don't know what to do with these people, and, and some of these people have been there for many, many years. As I said, um, they came up with three possible solutions. The first one is to help these refugees go back to their home country if they want to, if it's safe. Most of the time, it, it doesn't happen. It's not safe for them to return. Even after 40 years, after 30 years, after 20 years, it's still not safe for them to return. The second option is um, uh, to integrate them in their host country uh, so they can get the citizenship of that country and, and, and resettle them there. That is not possible. The majority of, well, all of these countries that host the refugees are poor country. They don't have the ability or the resources to even take care of their own people. Now, asking them to resettle refugees, uh, it's impossible for them. And this is how the priority is. The UN, when the UN is talking to these refugees, they give them this option. The first, the second, and the last uh, option is to be resettled in the third country. Now, and that's where the U.S. comes into play, is to accept some of these refugees. Uh, there is about 25, only 25 countries that resettle refugees, and the U.S. is the biggest. Um, to give you uh, uh, an example, in 2012, the U.S. resettled 76,000 refugees, and the second uh, country resettled 2,000 refugees, and that was Sweden. And Canada resettled 500. As you can see, it's a big difference from 76,000 to uh, uh, 2,000. So this means uh, uh, this resettlement program belongs actually to, uh, to the Americans. Um, now, uh, this report is from 2014. Uh, Wait says Europe and Central Asia. The majority of, of, of the refugees that came in 2014, 1,000 of them were uh, Afghans. Now, remember that we looked at the numbers. The Afghans refugees are 2.5 million. And then uh, we only bring in 1,000 refugees of that particular population. You would think that they would bring in more people because there's more refugees from that country. They don't, and the reason for that, I'll tell you, is uh, because many of them don't pass security clearance. Uh, I know that many people are concerned about the security of this country. Uh, uh, I am also concerned about that, just like you are. And the U.S. government is even more concerned about this because of this. 
they go outside the U.S. and start tracking down the terrorists, these bad people, so they can protect the U.S. from outside. There's no way the same U.S. government will bring in someone that is going to cause us trouble. They make sure that they are doing security clearances and only the people that are uh, uh, cleared will enter the U.S. And th th that number itself uh, is, is, uh, um, is, is saying that truth of security clearance. Another example that I'm going to give is the, 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 the Syrian refugees. This year, um, at the end of March of this year, nationwide, they brought in 600 refugees from Syria, and they were resettled uh, in the states east of, of the U.S., all of them. Now, we saw that in 2013, it was close to 2.5 million of Syrian refugees, and they're only bringing in 600. And this year, they approved 70,000 refugees to come to the U.S. Now, 70,000, and they're only bringing in 600 refugees from that particular country. That means uh, uh, security clearances is really, really tight. And, and I think we should not be uh, 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 afraid of, uh, of the refugees that are coming because the U.S. government is, is really doing a good job in that regard. And, and then the East Asia, last year we received 14,000, um, and, and those ones are actually uh, from Burma. The refugees that we, we brought in are from Burma. And then uh, in, um, in Near East Asia, South Asia, there is the Bhutanese that are coming out of that region, the Iraqis, and the uh, Iranians. And I'm going to give you the numbers of all this population that came to actually in, in Twin Falls so that you can compare the numbers uh, uh, with this one. Uh, Africans, uh, 15,000 of them came, and then uh, uh, Latin America and Caribbean, only 5,000 um, came. So these are the numbers. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, we have uh, four resettlement agencies in Idaho, uh, uh, CSI refugee programs and uh, 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 agency for new Americans, the second one. The third one is World Relief and uh, International Rescue Committee. And those three agencies are based in, in Boise, and we have one in Twin Falls. Since 1975, that's when Idaho started res resettling refugees, uh, they have resettled a total of 15,000 refugees uh, to the state of Idaho. Now, when you look at 15,000 for the entire state and thinking about the U.S. government bringing in 70,000 refugees, that's a, a small number of the refugees that come to the U.S. It's really a, a small. Uh, this, the 15,000 since uh, uh, 1975. Now, in Twin Falls, for the past five years, we resettled um, only 1,317 refugees. And the biggest population is the Bhutanese. We resettled uh, 496. Uh, and then the second biggest population is uh, the Burmese, which is 242. And Iraqis, we had uh, 231. Uh, Africans, we had 216 from Burundi, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, and the, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Iranians, we got 83. 45 Afghans and six Vietnamese, three Pakistanis and two Ukrainians. These are our numbers uh, that came to to, uh, to Twin Falls. For and these numbers are for the past five years. It's not it's not last year. It's five years. Um, now uh, this is the whole process that a refugee goes through uh, to be able to be admitted in in, in the U.S. It starts with uh, 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 the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, which is a branch of the UN, uh, or the US Embassy that is in that country, or uh, any other nonprofit organization that may refer a case to, uh, to the US resettlement program. Um, now, after 
and before it's done, now, before, let me just talk about what happens before the UN decides this case uh, is up for resettlement. The first condition is um, the person has, has to have been living in the refugee camp for at least five years. And the UN, the UN has to provide a record of this person for the five years period, and uh, um, meaning they would have to collect information about what are the activities that this person is involved in, what are the groups that this person is affiliated with, and then if they pass that, then the UN will uh, re uh, submit that, that uh, uh, refer to the, the US government, and they have a federal contractor that is stationed in, the, in each, each of the continent. There is one center that is a federal contractor, and everybody that works in that are uh, US citizens, and they have passed the top secret uh, clearance. So what they do is they go to the camp, personally go to the camp, and, and interview the people and collect the information about them in comparison to what the UN provided to them. If they pass that interview, then it moves, uh, it, it is referred to the State Department. The State Department will review the case again and make sure everything is fine, and then they would have Homeland Security involved in trying to uh, do uh, the security clearances. Uh, security clearances happens with uh, uh, the coordination of Homeland Security, but many government agencies are involved in this. There is the FBI, the ACIA, local uh, law enforcement agencies, and international agencies that help uh, collect the information. But keeping in mind that the U.S. is the big supporter or big funder of the U.N., meaning that in everything that happens in the camp, the U.S. is involved and they know information about the people that, uh, that are in a refugee camp. Uh, so the U.N. is now going to fabricate the information because the majority of actually people that uh, uh, are heading all of this uh, uh, um, uh, U.N. efforts are Americans. Uh, and then the process is, is really, really long. And I don't want to take uh, uh, much of your time and leave some time for, uh, for questions. But, but the, 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 the process is very long. And each of this time the person is interviewed or is being checked, they do a fingerprint. They have to fingerprint them to make sure that they are talk all these different agencies are talking to the same person. And then I'm going to just go briefly with uh, 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 services that we provide. We provide uh, temporary financial assistance um, and uh, 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 help them apply for food stamps, housing, uh, health care assistance. So we help them with uh, appointment, medical appointments and follow-ups. We provide transportation to them, employment services, ESL classes, and, and cultural orientation. Then our goal is to try to employ these people in the shortest period of time as possible. And we've been able to resettle refugees uh, 2.5 months after arrival. Less than three months, all these refugees are employed and they move on. So, um, if we, do we have sure. more time? Okay, so um, 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 if you have questions, then yes. Say it again. Do you track the refugees back to 1975 or, or so? And uh, do you have any statistics of how they fare and where they are now? Most of, most of the refugees that were resettled in, 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 in Twin Falls stay in Twin Falls, most of them. But they are free to move. They can move to another state if they want. But the ones that are... Uh, still in Twin Falls are really very successful people. There's, uh, there's refugees that own homes. There is uh, uh, business owners uh, in, in, in Twin Falls that are very successful here. Yes.
Well, I, I really, I really don't, don't think so. You know, uh, many people think that um, the refugees, they come here and, and, and they're using our taxpayer money. Um, what I would say is, is this. They, we don't use any state funding or county funding or uh, city funding to help refugees resettle. We get federal dollars. Yes, it's taxpayer money, but if we don't uh, accept those federal dollars into uh, Idaho or in, in the Twin Falls, then they will resettle these refugees in other states and the federal dollar will follow them. So it doesn't actually help the state of Idaho if the federal dollars don't come to Idaho and uh, the money will be spent in Idaho, which means uh, it goes into our economy. So I, I really think that they don't. Now, as I said previously, we, our goal is to get them jobs as soon as possible, and our average is two and a half months after, the, and then they get a job. Then they start paying into that fund as well. They start paying their, their, their taxes. Refugees come here with uh, their legal to work, uh, after they get their Social Security card, which takes about two weeks for them to get it. And after that, they're available and ready to work and they start paying taxes, just like uh, uh, any of us here. Yes? That's, that's a good comment, and I'll, I'll add this, that um, some people think that the refugees come in Twin Falls to take our jobs, but that is not true. Um, it is not true. If you visit the Department of Labor, which is in charge of trying to help people find jobs, you would find that there's only like one or two people actually looking for employment. Uh, so that means the people that are not getting jobs are people that are not going to look for a job. And, um, and, and then uh, there's a caller that called and, and they, they made the same comment that refugees are taking jobs. And then I said, well, we have, and it's true, last week we had f th uh, an employer with five jobs available, could not find someone to, uh, to do the job. And uh, all our refugees right now are employed. We didn't have a refugee to provide. So and then I said, coming in. Will connect you to employment, but I haven't seen anyone come. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but we'll give them leads to how to get the jobs if they come. Um, she is uh, going to talk about the refugee day. If there's no any more questions, then I'm gonna um, have. Do you have a question? Yes, um, and that is true. And many people are concerned about the refugees coming to the Twin Falls to change the culture of people in Idaho. Um, and, and that is true. Uh, that's what people believe. But, but that is not true. I would say that is not true because we, uh, uh, we have uh, 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 cultural orientations that we have to provide to them and so that they know what the American culture is. And uh, to respond to you is we do our best. Um, we have a very short time because employment is the priority in this case. As soon as they get a job, uh, even our ESL program, which they need the most, they, uh, uh, the moment they get a job, they go to work. So um, in response to that, I would, I would I don't know if there is any uh, teachers uh, at our Twin Falls School District here to, to testify this. Um, the, num the big numbers of our refugees come are actually kids. 
And those kids are changing. We are changing them. They are not going to change us. It's only 300 refugees that we bring in a year. How can that be possible for them to change us? So it's not possible. Uh, uh, and we are involved in trying to help them integrate uh, and teach them the American culture. Oh, yes, so we, we, uh, um, we get 300 refugees a year, and they don't come at the same time. Um, some months we have many refugees, some months we have zero, some months we have two or three. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. In February, we got 47, 45 refugees. In, in February, in March, we got 25 refugees. In April, we got zero. And in May, uh, we had 23 refugees. And in June so far, uh, we have 13 refugees scheduled to, to arrive. Yes, you had a question. There are many ways to help. So if, if we could just stop you from two years, you can direct us to, to places. Yes. Help. Yes, yes. And, uh, Thank you, and um, if no other questions, then I'm gonna invite Tara. She is our community liaison. Uh, she organized many events for the Refugee Center, and she'll be talking about the brief, brief way about uh, multiple events that uh, the Refugee Center organized in the community. Uh, in that effort of trying to help these refugees integrate in our community. <coughs> Hi, um, like Zeze said, I'm Tara McFarland. I'm the match grant coordinator and the community liaison for the bridge between the Refugee Center and the Twin Falls community. And I just would really like, I'm mostly here to say thank you to the Rotary Club because without you guys this year, you our refugee day would not be happening. <laughs> um, so I really want to thank you for all the support and, and um, donations that you guys are, are giving us and our day is actually next Friday on the 19th uh, at 6 o'clock over on campus behind the dorms. Uh, there's a huge grassy field there so we'll have tents set up and I really wish everyone would come out and support us because like everybody, the big talk around Twin Falls is all the negativity, negativity and you know we've even heard rumors of people wanting to boycott and protest Refugee Day. So it's, please come out and show your support that, that you know, the good people of Twin Falls are not just the bad guys. So um, <laughs> with that being said, uh, I do, do coordinate a lot of different org uh, events to try and integrate and teach the c refugee community about how Americans do things. Our, our other big uh, volunteer opportunity and um, learning, I guess, curve is in the August, we have our refugee summer school for the children, which kind of helps teach them how to act in school because like you saw Zay's picture, it's not like American classrooms. So how to act in the classroom, how to you know begin learning to read and write and get along with people that are different than yourself because mostly the children have only been exposed to their own cultures and this allows them to have a safe place in that to learn how to get along with everybody else. Um, so with that being said, I thank you all very much for everything. Oh, hey, sorry, one thing Zayze just remembered. Um, our other thing, big huge thing is at Christmas time we have a Christmas party um, it is hosted by a local church. Uh, they do, the really cool thing is they eliminate religion out of everything. And it's in, everybody who came the last year gets invited to come. But you can't keep a secret in Twin Falls because everybody shows up anyway. That's refugees that have been here for five years that they show up to, which is okay. You know, it's a good time. We get to see people I don't get to see every day. And, uh, so they come and it's just really great and gratifying to see people who 
don't share the Christian faith, but every child knows who Santa Claus is, and they all show up smiling and happy, and they want to pose for pictures with Santa. And um, so that's another great volunteer opportunity too, if you're looking for something to help out around Christmas time with the families. And thank you very much. Thank you, Zeze and Tara, for that great program. Appreciate it. Zeze, he's a little token of our appreciation.